We are here with Matt LeBlanc from Episodes. And Matt, I want to start off by um, asking you about the most recent season of Episodes. Your character was really sort of in some ways at a bit of a, a low point, like his show's getting cancelled, he's looking for another job, he's run into financial troubles. What was what were all those things coming to sort of together at the same time like for, for you to approach it this season? Uh, <laughs> I feel like a big mess. To tell you the truth, it was, I'm glad it was all fiction. Um, you know, especially the uh, the money situation. But you know, I think this year it's you know consistent with the way the show's gone. It's it seems to get worse and worse and worse every season. The problems get bigger and bigger and bigger. And I think this year, for the first time, it's the first time that Sean and Beverly the English couple and myself are on the same side of a problem. Usually we're at odds with one another. And in the beginning, you know, Pox has picked up for six more episodes to prevent me from going to another network to do another show. So it's just a chess move on the part of the network. So we know the shows will never be aired and nobody is everybody reluctantly goes to work on the show. So that's the first time we've all been on the same side of an argument which was, that was fun to explore, to see how their characters dealt with it as well as me, and to be on the same side of something. That was fun. And the money thing was a really great tool that the writers used to, to um, enable my character to let Sean and Beverly's characters think about their own financial future in a way they never had before. Which, so, I mean, it, I can't say enough good things about our writing. I mean, it's really, really strong writing. Mm. Um, I just want to, there's a bit of light shine on your face, Matt. Do you have a, like a blind or a curtain that you could pull to your right or? Oh, no, it's sitting by the window. No, don't, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Um, what do you think from this past season, like, do you have an episode or a particular moment that you thought was just particularly funny for your, for your character? Ooh, you know, <laughs> The way we shoot the show, we kind of, they're all written in advance, so we kind of shoot them all out of order. So that nothing's really ready until we're completely finished shooting. Um, there was some, there was a lot of drinking this year. My character was drunk a lot, I feel like. And that maybe just because there was, it was so zany when he was, but I felt like I was drunk a lot of the time. And that's always kind of a fun thing to play, you know, to play drunk when you're not actually drunk. Kind of trying to remember what it was like <laughs> last time you were drunk. It's sort of interesting because, like, you know, this show in the past, like, your character sort of being like, you know, th this sort of high status, very confident sort of person who's very confident in himself. And this season, a lot gets sort of taken away and stripped away from him, or at least the threat of losing stuff uh, really comes. And he sort of, you know, needs to rely on his writers a bit more and, and sort of he needs more from them than usual. Yeah. Yeah, I mean the whole. I mean, even from season one, it's been about this. It's a bit, It's been about this comeback that never seems to come to fruition, which is, I think, a really funny dynamic. You know, you have this underdog. So if he, he, he kind of want to, you kind of want to see him do well, but you know, he's probably not going to. You mm -hmm. know, and he and Sean are very unlikely friends, and and Beverly as well. You know. The thing I find really interesting about your character in this show uh, and a bit of an irony that it might be for you as well is that you, um, like, the character is so, the Matt LeBlanc you play on the screen is so, uh, has so, such low self-awareness. Like, you know, the comments he makes about his money and he makes um, about just things that have happened in previous seasons of the show that he doesn't even realise that he's sort of referencing and things like that. Um but I imagine getting scripts for this show and reading through them as the real Matt LeBlanc, it would make you more self-aware and more sort of reflecting on, on yourself. Like, how, how does that sort of dynamic work? No, not really. I mean, no? in the beginning, I was more worried about that. But now, I mean, I think everybody knows that it's a fictitious character that just sort of slapped my name on and drew some parallels to my life. But th I think that's where the fun lies, you know, uh, for me, you know, and I've said this before, I don't, I don't really mind being the brunt of the joke as long as it's a really strong, funny joke, a smart joke. So I, I'm game for just about anything they throw my way up. 
you know, I've, there's only there's only one very small joke that I thought crossed the line, and I, I you know, I objected, and they were like, "That's your objection, fine," and they, we didn't do it. But for the most part, I'm I'm up for just about anything they throw my way. I pitch stuff to them, and they say about what's really happened to me in my life, and they'll say, "That's disgusting. We're not doing that. No way." <laughs> You don't want to share anything that was too disgusting to get onto no, TV? I, I better not. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, I, I get now, I think everyone does know it's a fictitious character that you, you're just playing a hidden version of yourself, but do you think there's a real benefit to doing uh, the show like this where you do get to draw upon sort of an audience sort of or a perception of who you are? And like I guess sort of like in a similar way to how sort of Larry David's been able to sort of parlay this knowledge of him as the creator of Seinfeld into a new character um, through Curb Enthusiasm. Um, you're sort of able to parlay that audience knowledge of Joey and friends and, and all that into a brand new piece of art and a brand new sort of um, character. Yeah, I, yeah, I guess. But I mean, even that, it's, it's, that's what it is. It's a brand new character. You know, I think, I think it's inaccurate for people to get hung up on the fact that it's, I'm playing myself or that's, that makes it muddy and cloudy. I approach it like it's any other character I've ever played and, you know, try to, try to give them a, you know, a soul and a heart and, and, you know, approach it from a place with no judgment. Because I think once you, if I looked at it as playing myself, I would, like you said earlier, become self-conscious. And I think that would be a, that's a pitfall, you know, and I, I don't want to fall in that trap. So I have to look at it from, as a, from a very objective point of view and be his biggest fan always. So was it, it, I'm sorry. It's, been it's, been, it's been a lot of fun. I'll say that. Was there ever a discussion about not having you play Matt LeBlanc, but just a different actor with a, with a different name? Well, we were going to, we were going to have me play Schwimmer. <laughs> but he would have got mad. <laughs> well, I, enough alike, so I maybe could have done Rachel. That might have been funny. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, Schwimmer was in this season of episodes. Your very, uh, right, your yeah. first friend co-starred join 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 um pop in for a visit. What what was that like to have him uh, jo join set? Is there plans to have more friends people come onto episodes? Um, you know, I don't know. They're they're writing season five as we speak, so I don't really know what the plan is for season five yet. Um, it's a ways away. I don't think we'd go into production for quite some time on that, so I have a break. Um, but to have David on board was great. You know, he was game. He read the, we let him read it in advance, and he read it. He thought it was funny, and he was up for it. But, you know, it was a, it was a quick in and out kind of thing, and it was light and so over the top that. I mean, I think that's part of what makes the show great is in terms of playing myself. And for David, I think, I don't want to speak for him, but if I, I can assume for him, it was made it okay to play himself was that it's all so like insane what the writing is. You know, it's just so big and like crazy, but yet they, we try to ground it and make it feel like it could possibly happen. And a lot of it is just so... I mean, it's pretty out there. Some of the stuff we do, like that—that that scene with David. Did you see that scene? Yeah, yeah, it's great. We're at a mass murderer's birthday party. I mean, in Karakistan. I mean, it was—it was crazy. So it, that that zany sort of like outside the box element of it makes it really fun to go and then try and ground it. You know what I mean? You're sort of playing against the scene in a way. It was—it's—it's it's been fun. I think he had yeah. a good time. Yeah. It's very, uh, your show is very much trying to tap into sort of a bit of a realist, like behind the scenes of Hollywood, but you've also got those big, like bizarre, just outlandish things. And I think that probably helps you establish yourself as a comedy. We've had like this year, we've been covering a lot of sort of Emmy upheaval as sort of the whole question of what is a comedy? What is a drama? The Academy changing the rules of what, what will qualify as a drama. And usually the cable shows are the ones at the center of those discussions, the, the, the premium cable shows and the Netflix shows and things like 
oh, can an hour long be drawn? But with episodes, that's never been a question. It's clearly been a comedy. What does it feel like to sort of be part of a, a cable show that is is clearly a comedy show? Um, well, yeah, I, I I agree. I think it's I think it's funny. I think there are shows that are in the comedy category that are. You know they're not they're not as laugh out loud funny, but then there's shows like you know our show is very different from a multicam sitcom. That's a comedy as well. You know what I mean? I think there's it's very hard to categorize television these days and films for that matter because there's this especially but especially in television there's so much content now there's so many outlets for product that people are really thinking outside the box. There's a lot more people making entertainment now. There's a lot more entertainers, if you will, you know, producing and starring in and writing and directing television. And, you know, new ideas are bound to come down the pipeline that way. And there's, you know, fresh ideas for show, like for shows, like, um, you know, things where shows where they break the fourth wall and they look into the camera and things where they're, you know, kind of jump cut ahead and back and flashback. I mean, all kinds of tools have been used. And it's, it's, I think it's a great time in television. There's a lot of really interesting stuff. But to categorize things is difficult. That's a hard job. That's one. That's your job. So you, that's part of your job. So that's I, I feel for you, man. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks, Matt. Um, what, and it's interesting looking at the Emmys this year and the so great range of stuff. It's really interesting because you see so many of you friends guys um, on the ballot for different shows. You got Matthew Perry for the Odd Couple. You got yourself for uh, um, for for episodes. You got Lisa Kudrow made a made a comeback this year with the comeback on HBO. Uh, you got Courtney Cox wrapping up Cougar Town. Like that's that's four of you guys all heading up your own very different sort of shows. What's it like seeing? All, all those friends that have pop up when you guys were so close and such an ensemble for 10 years, you're now sort of all off on your own in the big TV world. It's great. I mean, I'm, you know, I, I have nothing but the utmost respect for all five of them. I mean, they're all, I think really gifted, talented comic and dramatic actors as well. I mean, given if that's the opportunity they want to take, um, I root for them all, you know, I, all my no pun intended friends. So, <laughs> uh, what what do you what do you think? Like, and having like got the this show episodes where you have created this fully uh, a new fleshed out character uh, with 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 which is so different to a Joey and probably so different to you in real life too. But what what do you think the lasting impact has been on Friends? Is it something that's sort of hard to shake off, or something that? like has a really sort of special place in, in your heart? Well, uh, you know, I don't, it, it, it definitely has a special place in my heart. It's, it's not the kind of thing that, it's not the kind of thing that I'm looking to shake off. Hmm. I mean, I, first of all, I don't think that's possible. The show was, you know, <laughs> fairly popular. I think it's sort of not something that any of us could get away from. So I think it'd be futile to try. Um, and I, that was, we, I spent 10 years doing that and I had a great time and I learned a lot and I grew a lot and I made some great relationships and, I, and it's not something that I, you know, yeah, it's over, but it's not something that I'm embarrassed by or want to shake off or no, I'm you know, happy to talk about it. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, that yeah, oh, that that that's good because it would be it would be a hard thing to to get rid of, and I, I think the real the real the good thing about like a show like episodes is you can sort of be um, sort of in on the jokes and reference it a little bit, but still create a new character as well, like through that. Well, yeah, that's why I agreed to do episodes because we talk about friends. I talk about friends all day, every day. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it it's just one of those shows, friends, where like I've, I've got like you know people who still go back to the episodes and still like make little life references to it and like sort of can draw on things in real life and go oh it's just like that. Ep I've got a friend who's always like it's just like in that episode of Friends, like and and this is like you know how, how long ago did that end? Like ten years ago or something like that. 
Maybe not quite, but uh, yeah, it ended yeah. ten years, a little, a little over ten years ago. A little over ten years ago. Oh my uh, god! Shot the show from '94 to '04, so ten years. Yeah. So 2014 oh, was the twentieth anniversary of when we started. Yeah. Um, just finishing off, we'll talk about episodes and the Emmys. Uh, with, with episodes, it hasn't just been you that's been nominated every season, and, and th this means you've been nominated for episodes as many times as you've been nominated for Friends. If you get nominated this year, you'll have been, you know, episodes will be the show that you've got most of your Emmy nominations for, uh, but it's also been your writers that have been nominated every single season. So it shows it's not just like... The Emmy voters are big Matt LeBlanc fans. They're big episode fans. There's a support for it outside of just your category. Uh, what's that sort of Emmy recognition been like for episodes? Well, for the writers, I think it's great. I mean, I'm really, really proud of them. I think that, you know, it all starts there with them. Um, you know, it's, it's really hard to give a great performance if the writing isn't solid. So... You know, I feel very blessed to have good writing like that. And, 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 you know, I've known those guys a long time, David and Jeffrey. And so, you know, it's a great working relationship and we get along really well. And, you know, we're all like a family. I mean, I'm sure you hear that on a lot of, a lot of people describe their shows like that. But I mean, they are like, you know, I've known them for 20 something years. So it's a long time. And I'm really proud of them. I'd like to see him win. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, and and uh, I don't think Friends ever won a writing Emmy, so it'd be really good to see um, to see them uh, acknowledged for episodes. That'd be really. And I think cool. this last season, season four of episodes, I think was our strongest season. You know, I think with, when a show is in its adolescence, there's a lot of exposition you have to deal with and sort of explain and re-explain to the audience what this world these characters live, to, live in and what these relationships with one another are about. But once a show gets a little bit of maturity under its belt, it has the opportunity to sort of dispatch with that and, and get on with, and you have more time per episode to tell stories. And, and I mean, yeah, you can, you can deliver exposition while telling a story, but it's a, it's a burden you know, on the writers. So now I think they're sort of, you know, off the leash a little more and they're, you know, it's just more about the, the stories and the relationships and the jokes and not really having to explain themselves. Mm. So I, I think that it's the strongest season yet. I wonder if also like that, once you're sort of poised in a show, there's less of a sort of need to feel like you have to prove yourself. Like, you know, you, you've now established yourself, you, you've gotten recognition, people like the show and you can sort of just, sort of like you've got room to breathe a bit more. Uh, not, not really. I mean, you know, you kind of, you kind of work hard from day one to the last day. You know, your work ethic needs to be the same straight through. Yeah. Uh, I think in success, some people tend to get lazy and not work as hard. And I, I mean, I, I don't really look at it as I have something to prove. Um, I'm getting paid. That's proof enough. <laughs> you know what I mean? So <clears throat> it's fun. I like it. When it stops being fun, I won't do it anymore. You know, it's got to be fun. That's that's kind of why I got in this business. It's beats the heck out of digging holes for a living. You know. Yeah, and the, and the the actors dream to be just like paid for doing good work. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you work hard and you know make a living. And, but it's it's the the project. I mean, I really this is a project that's really fresh. It's a it was a fresh idea when I heard it pitched for the first time. It's 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 been nothing but fun from day one. I mean, you know, the network has been great. They've been really behind it, and um, the writing's been strong. We have a great cast. Everybody pulls their weight. There's no uh, there's no dead weight in the cast, and you know, everybody's inventive and fun to be around and good good people well thanks so much matt for spending uh so much time with us today and all the best for the emmys thank you very much yeah thanks for uh, thanks for your time i appreciate it yeah no worries have a good one all right okay you too